Welcome in Synology's BA5, the Voltage Control Studio. Uh, it's been a while, but I'm going to give you a new instruction video. And this time I'm going to demonstrate the famous ring modulated feedback patch that was developed uh, at Synology in Utrecht by Jaap Fink in the 1970s. Before I go uh, into the real thing, I'm going to explain you a couple of ingredients of this patch. And the first one is very simple. Um, it has also been demonstrated in the instruction movie where I showed the Studer tape machines. Uh, it's basically an echo effect which is based on the delay time that is the result of the distance between the recording and playback heads on uh, a tape machine. If you are not familiar with that technique, then please have a look at the instruction video about the Studer tape machines in BEA5. So how does that work? We have a sound source. It goes into a tape machine, into the recording head, and then the playback head is going to the mixing desk. And the original sound, which I have here, is also going to the mixing desk. So here there is a delay between the recording and the playback head, so I hear the original and then the delayed signal. If I then also bring the delayed signal back to the recording head, then I create a, a repeated uh, echo effect and I will just play that for you now. So this is a Studer A80 tape machine. This is the recording head, this is the playback head. The speed is 7.5 inch per second or 19.05 uh, centimeters per second. Uh, and this is a couple of centimeters uh, distance so you can calculate the delay time if you want. I'm going to press play and record simultaneously. And now I'm going to send a sound source there. So my sound in this case is just a very simple triangle wave that is going through uh, an amplitude modulator uh, and the amplitude modulator is controlled by an envelope generator. And this sound is sent to the tape machine. Uh, the mixing desk is also explained in another instruction video if you don't know how to do that. And the delayed signal from the tape machine is coming back here. So it's obvious that I hear the original now and the delayed signal coming back from the tape machine. If I now send the tape machine back to its input, I get repeated echoes. You can hear that these repeated echoes gradually decay. And this is because the signal that I sent back to the tape machine is slightly lower than the original. But I can find the point where the repeat becomes almost infinite. So I'm going to expand the previous patch uh, a little bit. So I have here the function generator with a triangle wave. Uh, around 500 hertz. It's going into an amplitude modulator and then to the mixing desk. And the amplitude modulator is controlled by an envelope generator. And the envelope generator is triggered by a slow pulse. This is going into the tape machine. And the playback of the tape machine is now going into an AC multiplier or a ring modulator which is fed by a sine wave and then 
this is going into the mixing desk as well and it is fed back to the recording head of the tape machine. So we hear the original pulse again, but now if I play the machine, So it's obvious that every next uh, echo has a different color because it is ring modulated again. Now if I'm going to increase the level uh, at which I'm feeding back the signal to the tape machine, I can even take away the original signal now. And this system goes into self-oscillation. And it sounds very rich because of the ring modulator. But as you could also hear, if I don't take back the volume, uh, the system will uh, start to distort. So I need to control the level inside the feedback loop to stabilize this and to avoid distortion but to keep it going at the same time. What I'm going to do now is the following. This is the tape machine. I'm sending the output of the tape machine into the multiplier. From the multiplier I'm going into an amplitude modulator and then I'm going to a fader That's my sine wave. So you can see it's a closed loop. At this moment, this wouldn't work at all because the amplitude modulator gets no control signal, so it is closed. But now I'm going to take here an amplitude demodulator and here a voltage inverter. The sound in the loop goes to the amplitude demodulator the voltage at the output of the demodulator is equal to the level in the loop and that voltage is then inverted. What happens now is that when there is no signal in the loop apart from a little bit of noise from the tape machine, the amplitude modulator is completely open because the inverted voltage from the output of the amplitude demodulator is plus 5. And then when the feedback starts to build up, the level here increases, this voltage increases, and therefore this voltage goes down and it closes the amplitude uh, modulator. So I have basically built a kind of compressor limiter inside this system which stabilizes the amount of feedback. The pulse that I was using to demonstrate the echo effect is now not there anymore. Uh, so the only thing I have set up is actually this feedback. So if I open the fader, nothing happens until I start to amplify, so have a higher level in the feedback than the original signal. And just by manipulating the uh, equalizer a bit,
or by changing the frequency of the oscillator. This is an expansion of the previous patch. We still have the tape recorder here with the delay. We have the ring modulator here, the sine wave. And this is the stabilizing circuit that I uh, showed before. But now there are two devices inserted in the feedback loop. The first is a reverb and the second one is the third octave filter. The third octave filter has been explained extensively in one of the earlier instruction videos about uh, filters and also uh, when I demonstrated the uh, principle of uh, vocoding. So have a look there if you are not familiar with this filter. It's useful to have a look at the patch bay now to see what everything is here. Here is the ring modulator. It receives a signal from a sine wave generator. And the other input for the ring modulator is coming from one of the group faders uh, uh, on the mixing desk. Uh, and this group fader is receiving the output of the tape machine, just as is explained on the, on the patch that we saw. The output of the ring modulator goes into the amplitude modulator. The amplitude modulator receives the inverted voltage from the amplitude demodulator. The output of the amplitude modulator goes to the mixing desk. Then it is patched to the reverb um, and the reverb is coming back on the mixing desk and is brought to a group fader which then goes to the third octave filter and the third octave filter is feeding back to the mixing desk. So that's the whole uh, closed loop. The filter is set up in a specific way um, here we see the input matrix, so the signal that goes to the filter is going to all the 29 bandpass filters at the same level. And the outputs of the bandpass filters are grouped into nine groups. And these nine groups are sent to the potentiometers on the filter. So I can make a mix of the output of these filter groups. If I open the faders now, the feedback system through the ring modulator should start to build up a sound by itself. There are so many instabilities now in this feedback. The reverb, the tape machine with its noise, that, uh, and, and then of course the compression circuit, which all, to, all together make this patch sometimes go in unpredicted uh, directions uh, uh, suddenly. So if I just wait, this sound might change completely.
If you are familiar with Roland Kain's pieces that he composed at the Institute of Sonology in the 70s and in the 80s, then now you know where these wonderful sounds come from. They were developed uh, by Jaap Fink, who assisted uh, uh, Roland Kain, and Roland Kain was able as a composer to understand the potential of these sounds and uh, made these fantastically long uh, pieces. Um, the technique can be also expanded, and this is what I'm going to show you now. As I said, I was going to expand the patch again. What I have done now is that instead of using one ring modulator and one delay line, I'm using two ring modulators and two delay lines. So instead of going from the first ring modulator into the amplitude modulator, I'm now going into the second channel of the tape machine, then from the playback head of the second channel into a second ring modulator, and then the patch continues as it was before. And the sine wave is now feeding both ring modulators. It's important for this patch uh, if you want to build up these wonderful, um, on the one hand clean, but on the other hand uh, slightly evolving sounds, uh, that the ring modulation frequency for both ring modulators is the same. Okay, let's open the faders and see if it works.
not everyone who is watching this video uh, will have access to this wonderful analog studio. But uh, although this technique was developed by Jaap Fink in the 70s in the analog studios of the Institute of Sonology in Utrecht, it is perfectly possible to make a digital implementation of this technique. I have tried this myself in Kima. I have seen other examples of people doing it in Max. So uh, even if you don't have access to this particular studio, uh, I think you should uh, really try this out and see what kind of surprising results you might, uh, might come up with. Uh, the patch can also be extended to a four-channel version, uh, which is not only attractive from uh, a, sim uh, a sound synthesis point of view, but it is also introducing spatial qualities to the sound that are really fascinating. Um, this is something that we might uh, uh, demonstrate in, a, in an upcoming video. Uh, this is it for now. Um, I think there are good reasons to dedicate this uh, demonstration to Jaap Wink, my former teacher in Utrecht. And I hope you uh, have fun trying this out for yourself.